You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes! Welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blocker. Be joining me today as he does every single Tuesday for the Charlie Tuesday segment. Charlie Five, Auburn message board legend. What's going on, dude? What's up, man? I'm just uh, jacked, absolutely jacked to talk to you right now. So, man, let's, how? Let's get after it. Yeah, dude. I mean, we've uh, we've been doing this for a long time, but I don't think you've been on during the season, right? I haven't. I haven't. Uh, first, we, this is big. This is big. So the first time we came on was right after uh, Harson got hired, and this is it's, everything is built up. It's just built its way up to 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 this show. The first post game. Charlie, Charlie Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm, there it is. I'm, I'm super jacked. Super jacked. Give me a give me a nice overreaction from uh, Saturday night, please. Uh, I've already bo- looked at uh, tickets to um, the playoffs, so I've already Perfect. I've already looked at uh, looked at what they cost. I did the whole uh, looked at some airline tickets, so um, I'm 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 already planning ahead. So the team up. the team looked so good, and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. I'm tired of Auburn fans feeling the need to add the caveat. Well, it was Akron. It was so, Akron. Uh, stop it. It was Akron. Like, yeah. Auburn has not looked that good against a cupcake ever, ever, a- at least under the Malzahn era. Uh, they looked that good against Arkansas, but that's been about it. And right. so I, I, I don't feel this need. Like, I don't understand this need that we have to just beat ourselves up and to not just be like pumped about an awesome accomplishment. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. some of the best quarterback play that we've seen since 2010. And uh, broke I mean, the, uh, he just broke the um, single game pass completion record. If you didn't I, know that, I don't know if you knew that. I, I didn't know that, but there's just a ton of things. I mean, it's the first win for Harson. It's a hundredth season opening win in the history of the program. A lot of really exciting things happen Saturday night. The future looks very bright at running back. We've get, we've got the whole season with the three headed monster of tank Bigsby, Sean Shivers and Jarquez Hunter. And then we get Hunter and Tank next year as well with um, with, with, with several other guys coming in as recruiting class. Damari, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's just there's a lot to be excited about. For sure. You know, all of these receivers are going to get a ton of experience this year. They're all going to be coming back with the exception of Shedrick and Demetrius Robertson. I mean, there's a ton of things to look at for Saturday and get excited about. And so if you want – Auburn media, you know, if you want to tune in for us to downplay that, we're not going to because Absolutely we not. believe it's a big deal. It's going to happen. A huge deal. Saturday. It, it is a huge deal. And it's going to happen again Saturday against Alabama State. And then if you want to say that the litmus test is Penn State, it always has been. That is sure. not changed. But right. there's still information that we can get against Akron and information that we will get this Saturday against Alabama State to get us ready for Penn State. That's the way it's always been. That has not changed. Don't feel the need to justify it. Or explain yourself, right? right. Auburn fans. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, to get that out. Yeah, sometimes Auburn fans, we we try to battle. We have to battle with this sort of like inferiority complex, where it's like we know something bad's going to happen, so we kind of try to downplay all things. But here's here's what I liked about Saturday, and, and it got me, it gets me really excited for the future, and in even more games like this. Okay, number one, we handled business right early. We got in. We put the game away early, and we were out of there. Okay, right. number two, the second the you, you bring the off the starting offense out for the first drive of the second half. Then TJ uh, goes in, and he gets to play with the first team offensive line, which right. is big. He gets a drive with the first team offensive line. That shows number two that we are we have a coach right now who knows how to manage a roster and develop talent and get. This sees the importance of putting a team away so he can get new guys in there and get them game experience because you never know what could happen. Bo could go down. TJ got some great experience. He led a touchdown drive, uh, his first drive ever as an Auburn Tiger. Right. And, I mean, y- we saw numerous uh, folks play the whole second half. I mean, stuff like that is stuff we're not used to seeing. We're used to seeing jerking around for two and a half quarters – uh, so we'll be de- being doing stupid turnovers, this, that, and the other, and then we'll right. just eventually just run the ball late 
until we put the game away, and then nobody gets in until like the fourth quarter, and all you're doing then is you're just running the ball again. So uh, it's it's um it's exciting to see uh, a game like this that played out the way that great teams finish these games out, you, right? You, with so many different people touching the ball, so many people having success. Um, I, I enjoyed the crap out of it, not necessarily for just the 60 to 10 outcome, but seeing the variety of plays, uh, the, the format, all the different formations on both sides of the ball, all the different guys. Motions. I mean, there's a ton of different Love things it. going on that, uh, that is Love just it. like, wow. I mean, it's, um, I mean, it's symbolic of, of change of this change. new era that we're about to watch Auburn football go through. And I think it's going to be a fun one. I, I really do. And something that you were listening, I expected you to list this in just a second, but and, and maybe you were going to and I cut you off, but I wanted to talk about this yesterday, but Lindsay and I ran out of time. I love that when Auburn got into the red zone, they just, the, the quickest way to get somewhere is a straight line. <laughs> and boy, um, there was like, we're in a situation where we can run it and, and get in there. So let's don't do anything cute. Let's don't do anything fancy. Let's don't do anything, you know, any kind of trickeration. Let's just, Let's just win the line of scrimmage and go. Now, is that going to change down the line when we face bigger defensive lines? Maybe. I kind of have a feeling it's not going to, but I loved seeing that. I loved seeing three tight ends trot out on the field, and then we ran straight into your face and, and punched yeah. it in. And that got me that got me jacked. And on the second touchdown drive, uh, we, we did it, and it was a gr another great play but we got a holding call. We were just lining up and just ready to just bash them. And Tank made a great play and got a kind of a silly little holding call. But like, like you said, we got inside the, we got inside the red zone and we just started pounding people's face. And I love it. I love yes. every bit of it. No, nothing tricky. Another thing, this is something else. This is tiny, but I hated our run game before like the last eight years. And what, what I mean by that is everything was a read like a zone read type play, it was slow developing. Or at we, least it looked like a read. Yeah, it looked like a read. The I, I don't read, think many it, of them were reads, actually. No, but. absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it gave the illusion of a read. These these running plays hit fast. So, right. like, Tank is getting downhill quick. And I love I, – I mean, quick hitting runs were uh, predetermined, you know, lanes like typical, you know, pro-style offenses are, so to speak – Liming getting downhill, finishing blocks. It's none of this slow developing, leave a guy unblocked and no, you know, pop him in the mouth and go. No, no, yeah, and I quick. love, I love, I mean, Tank's first touchdown run is exciting for sure, but Shiver's not his touchdown catch, but his touchdown run. He gets the ball. It's an under center play. He takes two steps. It looks like he's supposed to go right. And it's it, the a hole opens up to his left. And so he does this subtle cutback. And it fooled the defense because they over pursued. And then, you know, he's just faster than everybody else to get to the end zone. But it's just you're giving guys a chance to succeed. And that was the coolest thing to me. And that was the first thing I noticed when I was in high school and I watched Cam Newton. But the way he threw the ball and the way Cam ran the offense is he gave dudes opportunities to go up and get it. And for guys yeah. to succeed, that's what was so cool about that offense in 2010 before, you know, folks adjusted. And, and obviously you have Cam, so it changes things. But that's something that stood out to me Saturday is guys are being put into situations to succeed. And that's not something that we've seen at Auburn in the last five years or so. I think 2014 and then some of 2017 were really the only time since then that we've been able to see that. For sure. For sure. Um, another, this is, this is simple too, but like uh, Kobe Hudson's touchdown play that where he looks so natural. Um, Natural wide receiver. Natural wide receiver. Our our routes. Every route is an option. Right. Like every route is actually could actually catch the pass. Like has an opportunity to make the play. It's beautiful. It's, and and that touchdown pass. I believe if you watch Bo, I think Kobe was at least his at least the second read, possibly the third read. And he went he went boom boom, ripped it down the middle. Uh, but clearly, and and, and another thing is. If that's last year, Kobe's probably not even looking for the ball because he he knows the ball's not coming to him. You know, what yeah, I mean? if he's not the first or the second guy, it's just you know you're just out there as a decoy. Right. But that's so much of like when you create a passing pattern as an offensive coach, 
everything has a purpose. And you're yes. taught, okay, this is the first read on the play. This is the second read. And there's a lot that goes into that. But the reason that there are certain first reads on plays is because, one, the coach is guessing that's going to be what's open. But also, if you're the quarterback, when you watch that first read and it's not there, you get information. And it's like, okay, if he's covered, then... That means they're running this defense. So right. And then Kobe you react. Is, Kobe should be open. On, Kobe should be open. In other words, in other words, I understand why we called this play against this defense. I understand everything about it other than, hey, this is the play where I just throw it to Kobe or this is the play where I throw it to so-and-so. No, right. this is this is whatever we call the play, X, Y, Z, B, 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 blah, 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 whatever. I like the 72 different, 72 different things they call the play. And right. I know that if my first read is covered this certain way, that means they're in this defense, and I know this bro is going to be open over here because right. of that. And I'm going to rip it to him. And they did it all. They did it all night. He checked right. down uh, a couple of times uh, to the tight end to tank. And man, it just looked like a real offense. It, I mean, looked, it looked like a real offense, and they handled business. It looked great. Absolutely. Um, all right. So a lot of things look great Saturday night, including tailgating was fun, but not all tailgates um, are created equal. And just kind of looking at it, you can tell which tailgates went to Frisky Whiskey and which ones didn't. Um, the winners of the tailgate definitely went to Frisky Whiskey. And so you've got time. You've got time as you prep for Saturday's tailgating in Alabama State. Go over to Frisky Whiskey. It is uh, just you know about 15 minutes or so from Auburn Opelike. If you're coming in from Atlanta, it's even easier. It's off of I-85. Just type it in your phone's GPS. And the deals that you will get when you're in there, it is so, so beneficial for you to go in there. 10,000 square feet of selection. Charlie Five, you've been there. You've experienced it firsthand. It's uh, it's 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 just a night and day difference. So head over, check out our friends at Frisky Whiskey. Also, today's show brought to you by our friends at Sweat Block. Look, it's hot out there. It's hot. We, uh, the the vast majority of the listeners and viewers here uh, are are in the South. It is a it is a toasty time of year. Well, Sweat Block can help you with all that. You don't have to worry about ruining your shirts. You don't have to worry about your appearance. And it's only something that you've got to do. It takes a few seconds. And you've only got to apply these wipes once a week under your arms. It's uh, it's doctor recommended. It's doctor created. Works for up to seven days. Uh, seven days. So, uh, very very cool stuff. All you have to do is go to sweatblock.com. And in fact, if you go there right now, you can get twenty percent off. All you have to do is use promo code locked on. Promo code locked on for twenty percent off at sweatblock.com. Charlie Five on a Charlie Tuesday here with you. Something I want to talk about now is we talked about. You know, how good Auburn looked, how crisp they looked. Most teams in the SEC did not. No, Most teams in the SEC really, really struggled. And then also other folks that are on Auburn's schedule. I think every Auburn fan, pretty much all of them, they were watching Wisconsin Penn State on Saturday. And I changed my pick. All summer, I've been like, I'm picking Penn State. I am officially changing that. I'll give a score prediction towards the end of next week. But Auburn is going to go to Penn State. And I think they're going to win because... Look, you can't teach a defense how to successfully tackle in the span of, you know, just a few weeks. I mean, the arm tackling and all that, and then just the turning it over in the red zone and things like that. I I just think we're going to see Auburn really go up there and take care of business now. I was not impressed with Penn State. They won. They beat a pretty good Wisconsin team. But, man, they uh, I don't feel like either of those teams deserve to win after watching it. It was a very sloppy football game. I agree, and I did not realize. I think their offensive coordinator is—is is it Mike Yersich? If, if if I'm not mistaken, yeah. he's their offensive coordinator. If you remember, Auburn was going was looking at trying to hire him when I think they hired Chip Kelly. And Mike Yersich is a very Mike Leach, Chip, Lin- Chip Lindsey. Yeah, Chip Lindsey. I'm sorry, sorry, Chip Lindsey. Mike Yersich is a uh, Mike Leach type of uh, offensive coordinator. It's really air raid and uh they are not anywhere near ready for that year one uh they they don't have i don't feel like they have the skill to be able to pull that off and the more i watched it i was like oh my god we're gonna smother we're gonna absolutely smother this team um with uh our our d our immense amount of talented dbs and this that and the other their offense was not impressive and it was supposed to be 
different. This was supposed to be different. You know, we're not going to be the old Penn State. We're going to be different. And I didn't really realize I didn't realize that was their offensive coordinator. So I'm like you. That got me more excited, uh, more excited for that game. That you know, it was it's they they coined it as a big one of those Big Ten you know physical games, but it wasn't really that physical. It was more like lack. Of, I feel like it was just like lack of execution on both sides the whole yeah. the whole night. It was not very. I just don't feel like it was just super, you know, hard hitting and this, that, and the other. It just was sloppy. It was ug- It was an ugly game. And, no, I mean uh, it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like Georgia and Clemson. I mean every every single tackle in that game was. Uh, I mean it's like a little explosion went off. But right, yeah. I mean watching Penn State Wisconsin, it was very much uh, they'd move it and get into the red zone, and then somebody would miss a kick. Or they would fumble it or make a, a really bad decision and, you know, force a turnover, you know, a lot of mental mistakes. And that's yeah, something that we've seen Auburn do a million times, right? It's like, okay, can you limit the mental mistakes and can you not beat yourself? And that was something that Harson talked about in his Monday press conference where he's like, you know, we didn't really make any mental mistakes. And that's a good right. thing. And that's something that you look throughout the league and throughout college football. But we'll just talk about the SEC here. Auburn, as far as execution goes, was probably the second best team on Saturday, just right. from a strictly Easily. execution, not a talent, you know, not projecting the rest of the season, but strictly for execution. I think it was Alabama against Miami. I think, and then I think it was Auburn against Akron. For sure. And I don't think you could put Georgia up there just because nope. their offense couldn't it's get trash. anything. Going. Right. Yeah. So, so I want to go, I want to throw back real quick. I got a question for you. When's the last time you remember us doing a whiteout? Do we do white outs very often? I don't think we're good at the coloring out. Okay, thing. but okay. He's never been good at it. We've done the blue before, and that's been the most successful. But anytime we do white or orange, it just it seems like it's a mess to me. Okay, so here's my question. Did okay. we did we do the white out against Akron to prepare for the visual of the Penn State game? Is Harson playing 4D chess right now? I'm just wondering. What do you think about that? Did that blow your mind? My mind is blown. <laughs> I thought about that. Uh, I had a, a couple of friends I, that we, we were talking about it. Like, when would we? I don't. We we never do white. We always do blue or orange. We do a white out the first game of the year against Akron. Not on TV. It's on ESPN Plus. I think Carson is playing 4D chess right now. Holy cow! I don't know Dang. what to say right now. I have chills. I have chills right now. The man is thinks of everything. I'm just gonna go. I'm, I'm crediting that to him. He's getting us ready for the visual of seeing the wide out at Penn State. Uh, so I'm just. I thought about that. I was gonna mention <laughs> it earlier and forgot. I just want to throw that bomb in there on you and drop it and let's see what see what we think. We have to record the rest of the show after that. I mean, let I'm, us know what you think, it, folks in the Discord. If you're watching on YouTube, one, please subscribe, it means a ton, and, and like the video. But leave a comment. Do you think Harson's playing 4D chess right now? I think he is. I'm all in. I'm buying that. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, let us know on Twitter as well. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's crazy to think about. That's crazy to think about. All right, I want to talk about the the start of the season real quick. But uh, first things first. This show brought to you by our friends at rockauto.com. Right now, so you can see all the parts available for your car, truck, or SUV. All you have to do is write Locked on Auburn in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection. We're live at low prices and all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. Also, today's show brought to you by betonline.ag. You can get a 100% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Um, all you have to do is use promo code Locked On. That is at betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. All right, so... Neither of us were high on what we saw from Penn State. Right. And then obviously the next obstacle is you got to go on the road to LSU, which LSU went on the road to the Rose Bowl and really struggled against UCLA. Um, in fact, they lost. And so a lot of fo- – I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there, and I'm not the first person to do this, but I'm doing it on, a, on this platform. This is, my bold, this is my bold prediction. Auburn is going to go down to LSU and win by three scores. Yes, and Ed Orgeron will get fired the next day. You think of that quick? That would be that. I mean, I think we go in and uh, absolutely destroy him. I don't know if he he. I don't know. Are they big fire people in the middle of the year? Kind of got. Yeah, you know what? Those is those crazy those they, cages. They were they with may, less, right? Tri- yeah, you're right. You're right. They did, and that's why Orgeron was the interim. That's right. So that is a uh, that is a bold pick. 
and I totally could see it happen. LSU looked just just disgusting. They looked awful. They gave up so many. The, the biggest thing was it, that total yardage doesn't look terrible. UCL, UCLA only had like, I mean, 470 yards. That's not great to give up, but it's not like just completely awful. But explosive sure. plays, explosive plays, they just gave them up in bunches. You know, <laughs> somewhere around like 10 or 12 uh, plays over 25 yards. And, right. bro, if you if you let if you give that if you're giving that up to this offense right now the way they looked against Akron, um, you're gonna have um, you're gonna have a long night, I believe. I, I feel like, and I've never been a Max Johnson guy. He is, he just looks so like so, unath- <laughs> unathletic and uh, stiff, and I, I I just and his arm is not that impressive either. Um, I, I I just don't see it. I don't see it with LSU at all. I, I haven't watched a whole lot of Max Johnson. I didn't realize he was left-handed. I just didn't know yeah. that. If you uh, if you are a left-handed quarterback and you're going to start them, it they better be good because if not, it's just like there's just so much you have to change in your offense. Yeah, and, and I mean I mean you have to essentially flip it. So I um I don't know I don't know I I, I just don't see it. I didn't see it all off season. I don't see it now. We'll see though. Um, Mississippi State looked really bad. Terrible. They lost, didn't they? Did they end up losing? No, they somehow miraculously they came back and won. Okay. Uh, La Tech had a chance to kick a field goal to win, and dude it kicked it. It was a forty-yard field goal, and I think he kicked it That's 17, right. 17 yards. Yikes! Um, but was, yeah, it was so it's like yo, know, I know Texas Gordy on SEC. They picked um, he he picked Mississippi State to beat Auburn. I'm like, I'm just not buying that. I'm not buying that. Yeah, A and M's a good one. Yeah, go ahead. Haynes King threw three picks against. Uh, against um kent state they uh they had a bunch of yards and they had a bunch of points i say for 41 points but uh they had um four total interceptions they threw four total interceptions five total turnovers so four interceptions and a fumble uh it was uh that's sloppy man that's sloppy right. uh, and kent state yeah is you know whatever they're whatever florida looked terrible i thought um right people are giving auburn a tough time for dominating akron it's like okay like akron's probably worse than those teams but like took care of business that's the important business handled business so yeah i mean i think legitimately we i mean i it's i don't feel like it's a big stretch to say we could be uh five and oh going into with georgia coming into town i don't see that i'm not confident that Georgia's offense is going to be great. Like, if yeah. Auburn can score 28 points against Georgia, that is a totally winnable game. And weird things happen during the Hare Stadium. Yes. That's going to be, I mean, the hype around that game is going to be ridiculous and tremendous. So we'll see. Uh, we're recording this Monday evening. So Old Miss Louisville hasn't started yet, but that's another one that could be interesting. You know, they're coaching. Lane Kiffin's not coaching in that game, last I heard. Right. Um, that's an interesting situation. We'll see what happens there. The A and M thing is uh, Auburn is playing them so late in the season where it's like they're going to get everything figured out by then. So like right. I still think that's going to that's be a tough win for sure um, when it's all said and done. They're going to figure things out. But I think Auburn fans should be really happy with what happened over the weekend. A lot Absolutely. of things helped their favor, whether it was other people struggling. Or, you know, Auburn just kind of looking sharp and crisp. There's there's a lot to like. So don't feel like you have to add caveats to things to be proud of your team. To all the Auburn fans watching and listening, it's okay to be excited. It's okay. For sure. I'm giving you permission to be excited. I mean, you score uh six to or five or six to uh the only uh, you scored six dry st- touchdowns on six out of seven drives. But yes. the, the the one was a uh, field goal. Hey, we call a timeout at with a minute fourteen seconds left, and then let Bo take you down the field and get in the field goal range. What I mean, who was that Ooh guy? Boy. I mean, boy. it was great. Way to go, Bo. Way to go. That's, that's real football. That's what that's what you do when you play real football. You you call timeouts at the end of halves to try to you know, right? Go go score because you get the ball right. back. So it's like a double double possession uh, for did sure. you see UCF Boise last Thursday yeah uh, Malzon got the ball with like a minute left and like they went down and scored and it's like 
Where was that? Where was that for eight years? Like, but he ran it. He like he didn't do anything. Like they broke a run or like something to get. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't any. It. No, they threw it down the field. I don't remember that. I don't. Remember. Oh, that was that at the end of the game or the end of the first half? End of the first half. It was at the I end of the. I first remember game. they broke a long run and then they started doing stuff, which is which is kind of like one of his what he was always known for. Ridiculous. But if you're if you've got Alabama like. And you're at Bryant Denny, that, that that's when it was like, okay, guys, what are you doing? This is like they kneeled it out and then punted it. It's like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? <laughs> Charlie Five, where can people find you and hear you, my friend? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five. You can find me on AuburnLive.com, the corner message board, or Auburn247 yep. Sports, the body get aboard, or daily, wherever you get a podcast, the dad bod golf pod. Awesome. Awesome. No, you guys have done a great job with that. It's been fun Thanks, to follow. Man. All right. Follow me on Twitter at Z Black. Be on Twitter at Locked on Auburn and on Instagram at Auburn Podcast. We'll be back tomorrow for a War Report Wednesday right here on Locked on Auburn. <laughs>